this time on episode 335 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We discuss Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episode 2, Know Your Onions, Weekly Marvel News, and your feedback. I'm Chris from Play Comics, a show where we look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material, a part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other astonishingly geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. You have been granted clearance by director Alfonso Mac McKenzie. Stand by for a shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Michelle. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. This show is recorded on Thursday, June 2nd, 2020. My sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Beth. Live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast worldwide via www.geeks.live. Come and join our live chat as we record. Ladies, happy National Cognac Day. Ooh. I've never had cognac. Oh, really? Nope. (laughs) I guess it's kind of a sophisticated drink that really doesn't really mean anything i mean the stuff that you like is probably the stuff that you like like you like rum Haley, right yeah but i don't drink that much rum anymore now i'm more of a beer girl oh what kind of beer lager beer and wine just craft beers whatever okay and michelle you're more of a tea gal yes yeah i am definitely a scotch guy i do like sophisticated rums And brandy, because I can have it, which is just fortified wine. But, you know, it's cognac. Anyway, uh, I chose this versus another one, and the other one would have gotten me in trouble, especially considered present company. So I decided not to do it. I told Michelle about it beforehand. She said, good call. So when Michelle says good call, it's a good call. Trust me, Haley. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. This was much better. I will. (laughs) All right, so we're going to move on for the rest of the show here. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the ABC Network television show, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the multiple Marvel small screen series like The Defenders and Runaways, and the Marvel Cinematic and Comic Book Universes in general. Because I'm a doctor, not a dame. Uh, If you'd like to talk to us about doctors or dames, you can visit our website, legendsofshield.com. You can leave us a voicemail at 844-THE-BUS-1. It's 844-843-2871. You can find us on Facebook. Our page is Legends of Shield Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Legends of Shield. You can find our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash gunnageek. You can tell your Amazon device to enable Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. skill. And remember, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a proud member of the GunnaGeek.com network. Agent Haley, you are with us tonight. Me? Agent Lauren. I am. Is not with us tonight. She could not be with us. I had a little bit of, you know, standard Lauren medical issue. So she decided not to be on today, which is just fine with us. We prefer her getting better and taking some sick leave rather than being on the podcast when she's less than 100%. So we wish her well. We do have some notes from her from last time that we will go over this time, and we hope to have her back next week. Ladies, are you ready to talk some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yep. Let's do it. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episode 2, Know Your Onions premiered on ABC on June 3rd, 2020. That was yesterday. Haley, why don't you go over the director for the episode? Sure. This episode was directed by Eric Lanaville. He has 96 directing credits starting in 1986. 
Those credits include 20 episodes of Saint Elsewhere, 10 episodes of Midnight Caller, one of Quantum Leap, Leap, six of Doogie Hauser, MD, one of ER, two of Bull, one of Gilmore Girls, one of Monk, three of Everybody Hates Chris, one of Pi- Prison Break, five of Lost, two of Eureka, one of Heroes, 15 of Ghost Whisperer, 10 of The Mentalist, seven of Grimm, one Legends of Tomorrow, three episodes of Black Lightning, and three episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Definitely one of the more experienced directors that we've had on the show. And I think it, I think it showed in the rest of the show. So, Michelle? This episode was written by Craig Titley, has 10 writing credits starting in 2001, including one episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars, two episodes of The Cape, which I watched, and I can never get that time back, and 13 episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The Cape was so close to becoming a good show. So close. It was actually getting good right around the time it got canceled. You guys make me feel so good that I didn't watch it. It was one of the few shows that I didn't watch that. And you can't find it anywhere. Oh, really? It's not like on con TV or anything. Nobody really wants to watch Mm. it. I could have sworn it was on Netflix for a while. I don't think so. Oh, no. Do I? Oh, God. Go down the rabbit hole. Do it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, it is available. But you have to pay. Oh, NBC for free. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the new Peacock Network? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's available. (laughs) Now you're going to spend some time going down that rabbit hole, huh? Oh, well, (laughs) if we have absolutely nothing to watch and and we want to do (laughs) something for fun. Oh, no, my gosh. It lives. The cape lives. to tell chris <laughs> <laughs> okay chris was the other one on the getting geek network that watched that fatally all the way to the end one thing that i've been watching and i talked about it last time i believe was that i've been watching agents of shield from the beginning i got further into season one i'm almost finished with season one but i'm past the winter soldier moment and i got to the cellist moment and everything and there is a lot of personal development that you can see is based in season one Fitz just pining after Simmons and it's just all great to watch. So I'm glad I'm watching it while season seven is going on because I'm picking up on a lot of stuff that they're showing in season seven. Title of this episode that we're talking about though in season seven is Know Your Onions. I actually thought I knew what was behind here and it turns out it is true, but Michelle actually researched the meaning of the phrase. So Michelle, what does it mean? Know your onions is slang for knowing a lot about something, being an expert on something. And it actually appeared in America in the 1920s, I believe, in a magazine called Harper's, Harper's Bazaar, 1920, 1922. For some reason, people think it's British, but it's not. It's actually American. And I knew it had to be slang because this episode was just don't drink and Every time they use 30 slang in here because (laughs) old time slang, because it was just like, okay, we get it. You did some research on Google and you put it in there. Excellent job. We get it. You're in the past. Got it. See, I feel like Patton Oswalt was born to speak in 1930 slang. Yes, it worked for him. Like when he did it, but it was just like, okay, after a while, though, it was just like, it's like, we get it. We get it. Zeke doesn't know what slang is. <laughs> yeah, and I don't blame him either because he didn't grow up watching gangster movies in the 30s or anything like that. Along with the references to 30s phrases, there was some actually punny dialogue in here. So I want to give a lot of credit to Craig Titley here, one of our favorite writers on the show, by the way, just because of his name, Titley. And we've talked about it before. I'm not, I'm not bringing up anything we have. I giggled this time too. Yeah, right. Uh, so. It was great. So a machine is just a machine. Oh, you don't have to get personal now with Enoch and May going back and forth. Oh, excuse me. I got to go fix my face. Literally, he's fixing his face. <laughs> Enoch's fixing his face. They, I think it was Colson said, take us to hell. Literally hell's harbor. So you knew that was, was coming. And just because it's Patton Oswald and it was the stereotypical 
30s gangster moment as they're driving up in the gangster car and Coulson's just gunning away with his Tommy gun. Oswald saying, die coppers. Koenig is saying, die coppers. So that, it was just good dialogue all the way across. And that's just when I started writing it down. There's plenty in the first part of the episode. So from that perspective, I will say Craig did a good job. I, I know. I'm saying it was just. I enjoyed it. I really did. And for a while, because it started to remind me of like old, uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of the Nick and Nora film series or any sort of like Clark Gable, like fast talking of oh, the Philadelphia story, um, Catherine Hepburn sort of deal. But I shouldn't really be thinking about that. I should be thinking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and what's going on with Yo-Yo, what's going on with me. Because those were serious moments that I feel like got a bit glossed over, especially the yo-yo part. I think the yo-yo part got glossed over. The May is obvious and had some time dedicated to it, but I really didn't appreciate how people were, you know, yo-yo is obviously going through something and it's, it was almost as though it was shrugged off. And it's just like, I hope it's not shrugged off in the next few episodes. I hope they come back to it. They're seeding an awful lot, and they only have, what, 13 episodes for this season? Right. So they got to get to some of this, but they do have 13 episodes, which means we have 11 episodes to get through some of these storylines. So if they want to get to them one at a time, like S.H.I.E.L.D. normally does, they take one or two big moments per episode. They've really got, they've really stacked the deck in trying to tie everything up. They knew this was the last season. This was a bonus season, as everybody knew, because the show really ended at season five with the episode called The End. And I think they've got some amazing moments in the future for us, which I'm looking forward to. But you're right. The yo-yo issue was one of the things that I wanted to talk about was that we didn't really get a lot of it, but we know she's going through something like something substantial. And it's not just that she's wearing normal arms. It, it's deeper than that because if it was just the normal arms and there would have been something else. And I'm trying to remember, has she used her yo-yo speed this season yet? I was trying to remember last episode. Mm -mm. Okay. So maybe it was something that the Shrike took away from her. One of the things that I, I loved about the episode is I wanted a bottle of what I thought was Canadian whiskey. It was not. I took several screenshots of that bottle, the case that Malik was supposed to deliver or whatever. It's actually, and I wish Lauren was here because she would get this right away. And I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it correctly. So my apologies, because I don't know Spanish. I took French in school. It's called La Resputa Rum. And it's not whiskey, it's rum. And do either of you two know what La Resputa means? Respite? No. The something. The Resputa. I didn't figure it out until I was searching for the actual bottle on Google and it came up with the translation for me. It means the answer. So the answer is the bottle of a bottle of rum. Well, okay. The answer of what Malik was up to was found in a bottle. Right. If you are finding answers to life questions by drinking alcohol, may I suggest therapy? That's that's fair enough. I was thinking in terms of the show with the little <laughs> vial, but you're right. It, it, it's the stereotypical finding answers in the bottle, bottom of a bottle. Right. It was it, the prop department did a great job because it was really difficult to uh, ascertain the label and. Like I said, it took me about five different screenshots to figure out what it was. And I wanted a bottle of it. Of course, it's just a prop department thing. So you're never going to get a bottle of it. And if you do get a bottle of it, you're never going to really know if the alcohol in it is like true alcohol or if it's just poured from another bottle, that sort of thing, so, which was probably true. I mean, heck, it was probably just like apple colored apple juice or something. I don't know how prop departments do that. But Mr. Zima took a drink. And Mac told him to hold back because that was the professional stuff, not the lightweight Zima stuff. 
I love that his nickname Zima. <laughs> it's official. Matt called him Zima, and that's his nickname. Why not, right? So something's definitely wrong with May. Should May go back into the tube? Do you think that is a way to fix her, or do you think this is something more systemic? I think part of it might have to do with having another Colson there. Like, that's not an easy thing to process, I would think. She was like that before she knew Colson was there. No, she was combative before that. She was eerily calm around the other Colson. I think she was eerily calm from the moment that she was doing the pull ups, the chin ups. I think she's like, I always got to get ready. And Enoch was trying to talk her down, calm her down, and she refused to do any of that. Of course, that could just be stereotypical May because that's what she is. One thing that was confirmed in this episode, and that I called it, by the way, is that we're going to take a journey through time. It's a time roller coaster. We're, we're taking a little journey through time, and they have gates that they got to meet. We had two episodes in 1931, and now we're going to go into the future, and I can only guess that we'll flip around from then. It's not just going to be two time periods. We're going to get a lot of time periods. And one of the reasons why I say that is because if you take a look at the motorcycles, there's three motorcycles in the back of the Zephyr One. They are from different times and they haven't used any yet. So I think we've got at least three more timelines that we got to go through just based on the motorcycles alone. Not to mention the weapons that are on the wall or all the different time of the money that is in the drawer a la Doc Brown. I think we're going to take several different time jumps here in this series. I think the next one's the 1950s because of the episode three title has commies in it. And that term really wasn't until like the 1950s. Haley, what do you think? Where are they going to go? I think that makes sense. We also know there's a certain character that they're supposed to meet at some point this season. And I think it makes sense that um, they're going to probably go in order in their time jumps, like instead of bouncing around, you know, they'll go to the 30s and then the 50s and then, I don't know, the 60s or 70s and then the 80s. I really hope the 80s. I want to see everybody in 80s hair. But yeah, I think they're probably going to go mostly in order. So they're not going to do a Back to the Future 2 where they're all over the place. That could be fun, too. It seems as though it is going to be in order because the Chromacons have time windows as well and it, and it seems as though that one paused and went this window is closed we have to go to the next and it seems as though they're following what they call a thread and it makes sense to go in order and try to yeah. nip it in the bud as my grandma used to say it's terminator time travel yeah oh. well yeah okay There's certain points where they can have the most effect on the timeline in the way that they want to. So those are the points they're jumping to. Also, largely, it is chronological as you're following like Sarah Connor through. Yeah. Except for it gets kind of squishy with the last few movies, which may or may not be can. I don't know. <laughs> Haley, I have a question. Yeah. Is it the first rule of time travel is that you don't talk about time travel? Except sometimes you do. <laughs> this episode. They just told Malik, you're going to kill a bunch of people. And it's like at the end, it's like, well, okay, I guess I'm going to go kill a bunch of people. <laughs> he decided not to kill Koenig. He could have killed Koenig and he didn't. I don't know if it was intentional or not. I'm going to say it is intentional because the shot was close enough that he could have aimed it. I think he did aim it for Koenig's upper shoulder. And hopefully that wasn't going to mess anything serious up. I, I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Along those lines, let's take a step back because the lady in red, who we never actually get a name out of her, don't know if we'll see her again or not because we, we're now time jumped. Her gunshot wound was solved by getting the bullet out. And I have no idea if Simmons sewed anything up interior or not. And then throwing it just to place it 
in a shot of, we'll call it whiskey, could be rum, I don't know, so a shot of alcohol, and there it sat, until the Comic-Cons came to the speakeasy, and Koenig saw it, and he's like, uh-oh. So he had to take a bullet to save everybody. So that's a TV medicine. Getting the bullet out mag magically makes the bullet wound not a bullet wound anymore. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, and it really didn't matter, because I, I was wondering why the bullet ended up in the shot glass. I should have known that somebody was going to have to swallow it later on, which... Yeah, because of gimmick. It's not great, because it's lead in your system. Yeah, it's encased in something, though, isn't it? It'll pass. If it's a full metal jacket, yeah, but... I don't think it was. Well, obviously, it's not that damaging because Kenny lives and actually has children because he was a bit shocked that he had grandkids. So it seems as though we don't have any babies right now. So he knows that he's got to get working on that. He's got to find him a dame to settle down with. Yeah. We uh, figure out how he got, gets involved in S.H.I.E.L.D. and robots. Yeah. So this begs the question. Haley, this is begs the question. There's that whole, okay, yes, we're in another time branch. So does the whole, it happened once before, so it will always happen, apply? I don't know. I, they play fast and loose with the time travel rules in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so it's hard to say. Maybe there was another catalyst for his involvement with S.H.I.E.L.D. and interest in robots in the Prime timeline that now won't happen, but who knows? Or maybe it's a loop and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. always went back in time, which is better. Like this was meant to be. This is how everything started from the beginning. It's, it's all Coulson's fault. One of the things that I wanted to point out is that not only does Koenig, but Malik does get glimpses into the future. So he's seen the walkie-talkies, he's talking to Deke, who says he's a genius, that sort of thing. If they go forward in time, if they meet Malik again, not Gideon, his father, Willie, if they meet Willie Malik again, is Malik going to go after Deke as a prized possession because he knows that Deke can invent all sorts of great stuff for him? Yes, I think that that was something that was set up in this episode to be used later in the season. Another thing that was set up is Malik said he owed both Mac and Deke. And I don't think he's going to go back on that because why would he even say that? Why would that be dialogue in there if it wasn't going to be revealed at some time in the future that he was going to owe them? Yeah. Yep. We also have the epic. It was really cool. I had seen scenes before because it was in the teaser trailer, but Enoch and May fighting. So in the trailer, you don't have any context why. You just see the slow jump of May towards Enoch, but you get to see the fight this time around. And May eventually gets the upper hand, but only because she traps Enoch and then uses a fire extinguisher on his head multiple times. So about that fight scene, did anybody else think it was very noticeable that they were using the stunt double more this year than they have in the past? Stunt double for May? Yeah. Remember, she is still at the time of filming since they did yes. it kind of back to back. Injured. She is still injured. So I'm not surprised in this yeah. scene. And, and if I didn't notice, know that, I might not have noticed as much how the scene was cut. But it, I very much noticed that there were a lot of like close ups of her face and then the back of her head or close ups of her face and then her foot. I liked it because it showed that experience trumps programming because Enoch downloaded he he tried to pull a Neo and just download it and just say a no Kung Fu. May's like, I, I know Kung Fu and I've been doing Kung Fu for a very long time, so I will beat your programming, even though you're a machine and I am just a human. This is not Enoch's first time travel rodeo. He's done this before. He's done the skip forward before. I don't know what version of Enoch that we're looking at right now, but we know that Enoch is inherently capable 
of making it to the next time that the agents show up. He doesn't know when they're going to show up unless he had some sort of communication with Fitz beforehand that we're not aware of. But he knows that they're going to show up sometime in the future. So all he does has to do is wait, hopefully catch the signs that they have traveled and then try to go meet them. So we haven't seen the last of Enoch. We're going to see him again, in my opinion. He's not just going to be left in 1931. Agreed. I mean, heck, the guy survived hundreds and thousands of years. What's 20, 30 years? No big deal there. One thing that they dropped, and it wasn't so much of a mystery that was planted at us, and you leave the episode and you're like, I don't even care about it, but on second viewing, I did care about it. who is the no-name guy, and I was thinking, maybe Fitz is the no-name guy. So the no-name guy was the guy in the car at the end that Willie went off to meet. Mm. Mm. That's too frame weak, frameworky. It is because Fitz had been a bad guy in the framework before, right? But we don't know where Fitz is right now. Yeah, I. We learned that Gemma has had considerable amount of time, so I think that goes to the ten year and possibly over mark. I don't think. I don't think so. I think it's something else. I think Fitz is doing, but something more important. Okay. I hope that we actually see him again. This isn't the first time that we're without Fitz for a few episodes because we did it in the futuristic part of the season uh, before when they went to go meet Deke. You didn't see Fitz for a while. And then you found out that he traveled through time to meet them. And then they go back and they, that's the Fitz that they rescue because the fits that has been through everything ends up dying and anyway fits in time travel i don't think get along very well and he's probably the most versed in time travel of anybody so i was watching some of these fights especially with the chromicons at the end and one thing that i thought of just inherently is that mac really needs a shotgun axe back yep shotgun axe i mean he does it's just in a weapon that he needs and he doesn't have it anymore so if they could find it again like if they go into the future and he just picks it out of the armory or whatever i think i'd be fine with that or he makes a new one i'd be fine with that too especially if he made a new one out of one of the chromicon guns because those things are pretty sweet i don't know if they're attuned to only chromicons firing them or the one that he tried was out of charge i'm not sure one or the other one thing that I noticed, noticed, and I'm not sure if this was truly meant to be a callback to anything, but they were tossing some guns at the end and just remind me of the gun tosses at the end of the movie, The Untouchables, as they were at the train station and had the final showdown going on with the, uh, the ledger guy. And it wasn't slow-mo, but they did a couple of gun tosses. They did a handgun toss and a shotgun toss. So just want to throw that out there that I recognize that it could have been from a other gangster movie like The Untouchables. Pro tip, don't throw guns because that's dangerous because you might accidentally catch it by the trigger. Yes. Another thing I wanted to point out is uh, Chromicons are just as good as stormtroopers in directing their shots at the end there because, you know, they didn't hit anything but big, huge crates. Despite the agents giving them plenty of targets to shoot at. Because when Patton Oswald with Koenig was told to go away and Enoch was told to go away, they actually didn't crouch around the crates. They put their heads straight up. I mean, if I was a Chromicon, I would have shot them. So, yeah. Serpentine, Shelly. Serpentine. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is such an obscure reference. What, for those that don't get it, Michelle, go ahead and explain it. Um, it's the movie called The In-Laws, and it's it's really funny, and one of them's like an undercover agent, and the other one, you know, is not, and and it's like, to avoid gunfire, you do a super teen motion, and there's one scene where the guy actually runs forward, and he's, and he's told Serpentine Shelly, and he goes back, and then runs back in a Serpentine pattern. It was just, 
anyway, it's just funny and it really doesn't sound funny describing it because yeah, you have to be there. <laughs> but that's where it's from. That's where it's from. All right. So ripples that waves. We didn't see Deke trying to grab any patents, but you know, Zima hasn't been invented yet. So I think he might try to sneak that one in. I hope not. He's going to have more opportunities. Like I said, 11 episodes worth at some point, he's going to pop one in there and, and maybe he's meant to do it at some point. So Fitz could actually go ahead and invent something based on some progress. I, I don't know. I think before the season is over, someone who is not a Chromicon is going to get left behind in a different time period. Oh, that would suck. And if I would to be bet, it's going to be Colson or May. I guess it could be Yo-Yo, too. If it was Colson, though, like as an LMD, I don't think he would age. So that's not as uh, like a big of a thing. I could see it being Zeke. That would suck for Deke. Yeah. Because he gave lemons to Sky. Or uh, maybe a pair of characters stays behind because it's like, you know, something needs to be done between now and the next jump. So somebody has to stay behind to do it. I could see Yo-Yo and Mac being in there because yeah, they were a I couple could see of, those two. at one point. Yeah. I mean, you could say Simmons and Fitz, but they're already. I don't think so because I think they're masterminding the trip forward. Well, I thought this was a heck of an episode. I really enjoyed it. I, it was fun. We got some action in there. We got a lot of uh, punny phrases in there. You got history of S.H.I.E.L.D. unfolding in front of your very eyes and Hydra unfolding in front of your very eyes. You had the super soldier serum. I was wrong, by the way. I posted on our Twitter account that it might be GH325, which I was close, but no, Lauren called it last time at super soldier serum so good on you lauren so this is the early one that red skull took right yes yes yep there's just a lot that's going to be on i mean erskine and schmidt red skeleton were brought up so yep i enjoyed it michelle did you enjoy the episode yes i did Again, I like the lighthearted tone. I thought it was great and has action. I'm just hoping that they don't drop Yo-Yo's story and things like that. That's, that's what I was really concerned about. I don't think they will. I hope not. I feel like that this is a season that was put together as a single piece, so I don't think there's any storylines that will be dropped. If it's in there, it's because it's going to be a thread that carries through. And they knew for a fact that it was going to be the last season. Neither of you two apparently has seen the actual trailer for next week, and I know yep. some of our listeners don't like it, so I'm not going to mention anything about your predictions for next week, but I will say that some of your predictions are pretty close to what actually happens, just based off of the trailer that I saw. Looking forward to next week. So far, Season 7, Episode 2 is my favorite of Season 7, but we'll see about the rest we've got 11 more next week we'll be talking agents of shield season 7 episode 3 alien commies from the future looking forward to talking about that and watching the episode and hopefully having lauren back In the meantime we've got an important news story about marvel's potential future So we've learned there's a ticking clock when it comes to the Defenders characters and Netflix and Marvel. IGN ran a news story, and I can't claim credit for this at all. Stephen Jondra, the network owner of Guinea Geek, actually posted this in the Discord server, and we were able to get it out to everybody during the week. Basically, we're talking about the Defenders, and we're talking about when rights revert back to the MCU. Now, or the Marvel, and we have heard in the past that Marvel was interested in picking some of these series back up. We've also heard that they're not interested in picking some of the other series 
part of this group up. But if you count the co- people that are familiar with the contractual terms, said there's a two year clock from when the shows get canceled to when the rights actually revert back to Marvel. And as it turns out, I believe Daredevil was the first one in the first batch to get canceled in November of 2018. So that means in November 2020, Daredevil is free game for Marvel to reclaim. We'll see what happens. They, we've heard stories in the past about them just kicking around things because they're not allowed to actively work anything for sure, but kicking around stuff specifically for Daredevil. And we have yet to watch Daredevil season three. That'll be the last thing that we watch, I believe, on no Jessica Jones season three would be the last thing that we watch. So I don't know where Daredevil is going to end. I don't know if they're going to take it forward or not, but it'd be nice to see Matt Murdock back in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It, remember when they were canceling these shows and we were like, why don't they just say that they're canceling all of them? I wonder if this is why they were like, no, we're going to drag this out as long as we can. So Marvel can't have their toy back. Maybe that was part of it. I think another part of it was that they still had to air the other series first and they didn't want to cut off their nose to spite their face. But when it came to the last two series, they just said, OK, Jessica Jones and I believe Punisher, I believe, were the last two that they said, this is it. I have two questions for you. One, do you think Netflix will pull these shows off because Netflix will cancel and pull stuff off and bring stuff back? Or two, do you think they'll do a Fantastic Four and just do something with them just so they could keep their rights? I think at this point they'd have to reboot the series because the main cast wouldn't come back because they already got canceled. Why would you come back to work for Netflix as one of these prime actors on one of these shows when you know that they don't care about you? Money. I'm not saying it would be quality. Again, I'm using the Fantastic Four as the example here. Well, that's fair. And yes, you would have to recast everybody because I don't think anybody would come back into their roles. I think they would for money. So, but do we think Netflix will actually keep these shows on? If the rights revert back to Marvel and Marvel starts making shows, do we think Netflix will keep the shows on or to be like, hey, our shows are better or will they start pulling them off because Marvel's airing stuff on Disney Plus? You mean just keep the content they've already created? No, Netflix, Netflix will pull shows. They'll just stop. You know, they've pulled stuff from their lineup all the time. No, but not, I don't think any of like their self created content they have because they don't have to pay licensing rights for it. Right. I'm just wondering if you think Netflix it can be petty. That's the question. Will Netflix be petty? I think so. No, I, I think it, it's in their interest to keep this content there because people come to watch it. Like they gain nothing by pulling it. Like, it doesn't spite Disney in any way for them to pull that content. All right. I was misunderstanding what you're saying, so just pull it right off. Yeah, they could. They could pull it. Yeah, sure. Why not? I, I don't see why they would. I don't see how it helps them in any way. I can see how it would, m- like, make Disney look bad if these shows are deemed to be much better than whatever Marvel Studios creates for Disney+. Plus. But I don't see how it helps Netflix in any way to pull it. It'll be an interesting thought exercise because it's not just Marvel that has this going on with Netflix right now. The CW DC shows also have this same thing where you have all the past episodes to date. I believe all the series to date are on Netflix, but yet now with the new Warner Brothers streaming service or whatever they're calling it, HBO Max or whatever. The intent, I believe, is to bring future seasons of those shows, those CW shows, to a Warner Brothers-based streaming service and not Netflix. Same thing. Netflix could pull those shows. That's not the same thing. I think that the CW Warner Brothers would pull the shows, like just not renew their streaming rights contract with Netflix on those. Right. That's what's happened. They're not... 
Just like what they did with Friends. They didn't renew it with yeah. Friends so they could pull Friends and put it on HBO Max and stuff. Yeah, all, all the Marvel movies and Star Wars movies, too. It wasn't created. I get it. It wasn't created specifically yeah. for Netflix. This Got is it. content that was Netflix was a creative partner in. So they own the streaming rights to this. It's not like they're renting the streaming rights for four years or whatever. They These are their shows. They can be petty about it. They could also, and this would be a smart business decision, unless they're literally trying to be petty, is they could sell those shows and then use that money to create great content. Netflix original content, which they do have great Netflix original content. Lost in space, altered carbon. Yeah. I think that is the only path I see for these coming off of Netflix is if they sold those to Disney and said, hey, you want you want to be able to stream this on Disney Plus or Hulu or whatever? Give us I don't know how much money this would be worth, but tens of millions of dollars, I would think. Or they could keep it and just bet that some people are going to subscribe to Netflix just to binge those shows for a month or so. Yeah. I don't know what the calculus is for that because they never shared how many people are actually watching this stuff. Netflix yep. has never done that. I just want to do a thought exercise. I just like, <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen. Something's going to happen. It could be nothing. It could be nothing. It could be something. Nothing is still something. Nothing is. They keep it there for the reasons that I, I stated. Uh, something happening uh, of them pulling it would be pettiness. Selling them to Disney would be, okay, we got some money from that we can then reinvest into creating our own series. Yeah. It just depends on which way they want to go. Interesting news story. We will keep our eyes on this. We have been for the last couple of years since they have been canceled and we are going to keep on watching the Netflix uh, Defender series as long as we can. And with that, we will get into some feedback from the last week. We got some feedback. First up, we heard from Stephen John Drew in Discord. Yeah, so Stephen watched the premiere episode, the pilot episode of season seven, and he had some things to say about it. One of the things was, so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is now Prime Era Legends of Tomorrow. That's fine with me. For those of you that don't know, Legends of Tomorrow is inherently a time travel series where you're going back and fixing history along the way. And that's kind of what they're doing is they're trying to maintain history here in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Another point that Steven made was I have only rewatched a couple episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I understood several of the references to past events that they dropped, but it was a stretch for me to remember them. I felt like I fell victim to the odd schedule of the last few years. There have been some quite some long hiatuses, and I believe the span between season five and season six was more uh, than a yeah. year. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, so, and that was because season five ended in May and season six began in May. And okay, so there's that. But this show has been going on for seven years. If you're not rewatching it like I am, I could totally see a lot of these references falling off, even for us, because we've podcasted on it since 2013. It's a lot of stuff to remember, man. It is. Yep, I don't remember any of it. I want to rewatch it, but I don't have time. And the only reason I was rewatching it is I actually put a TV out in my garage. It was out in my garage doing some work. So I, well, let's put it on. Let's see how far I can get. And I'll be rebuilding an engine for the last time this summer. Either it's going to work, it's not going to work. Car's going to be out of my garage this fall, either way. And the third and final thought that he had is kind of controversial i'd like to talk about it. he said for me it missed the mark it was close but not where i would have liked to have seen it the plot was predictable in several places and just felt a bit thin for the season opener of the final season did it make me want to watch more yes but it also felt a little because of plot a few times two examples of this include colson basically having no real care at all about being an lmd being in the game after about two seconds and also Yo-Yo's forced, re forced resistance to the arms for, again, about two seconds. We talked about that. Additionally, the fact 
that they weren't targeting Roosevelt was called by the fact that their theory of who was the target was determined in again about two seconds. I was pretty sure the bait and switch was going to happen, but like I said, it just felt a little thin for me. I'm not hating on it. There were some great qualities too. For example, with that last part, the reason behind the switch was really cool and the result of who they then have to save. It's a great throwback to the franchise. I really enjoyed most Simmons scenes, and I think this version of her character is probably my favorite, and I think they've got the dynamic of the crew back to the one we loved in the earlier days. So that is the feedback from Steven. To that, I will mention even back in the first season, you guys remember, and we just talked about having trouble remembering, but do you remember the whole clairvoyant thing and who was the clairvoyant, who they thought the clairvoyant was and who it wasn't, and then he had Hydra thrown in there? All at the same time, do you guys remember that? Yeah, kind of. Same thing right there. You know, they made some assumptions after two seconds. They went after that, and then it totally right turns into something else. I don't think the show's changed. Well, again, I actually do have to agree. We talked about Yo-Yo's dilemma with the arms happened off screen. You know, her dealing with that, all of a sudden, you know, she said that she, you know, didn't need them. She was proud of having the arms that she had. And then something happened off screen. And then she comes in, I don't have my arms. So again, this is two episodes in a row where the yo-yo storyline hasn't been that well handled. Which is why, again, I'm a little concerned. Episode three, they better start treating yo-yo better. They did it before. They did it in the lighthouse where they had different things sprinkled in for a while. So I'm just saying they've done it before on the show. This is nothing new. This is how the show works. But it was a major decision on Yo-Yo's part, and it happened off screen. Okay. I think this is something that happens with sh- the show a lot. Is there? There's elements early on in the season that don't have big effects until later in the season, and they don't always handle the early building blocks. Uh, with, with as deft a touch as we would have liked. All right. So, Stephen, it looks like you have some agreement to your controversial point. And you have some facts that I've thrown in that might refute it a little bit. All right. Let's move on. We got an email from 084, right, Michelle? Yes, we did. Okay. You want me to read it? Oh, I can read it. Okay. Guys, real quick, remember when 084s were a thing? I do, because I was just watching season one. <laughs> there was two 084s. Okay, on to the email. <laughs> Another great episode. Love all of the internal and teammate conflict. Classic change time versus allow terrible events to happen tropes and character study. And I'm still curious if they're going with loops or not. The stinger definitely suggests that the Koenigs were only interested in robotics because their grandpa met our team and Enoch, or maybe this would have just made them get even more into robotics in a separate timeline. Regardless, there are a lot of ripples being made. Enoch could just sit and wait to meet back up with the team whenever they travel to the next, but being the bartender at a Future Shield speakeasy sounds like he has the opportunity to change a whole lot. And I'm wondering if Malik would still have shot Koenig if Deke hadn't just insisted he was a killer. It was surprisingly fascinating to delve into a character only briefly referenced in one past episode. I'm curious what they're doing with May. Surely, Izel isn't inside of her, right? I can't imagine they want to keep that storyline going, but it's the only thing that makes any sense right now. Hopefully, it's something better than that. Very excited to see where we're heading next. I don't watch the next time on, so I'll be in the dark until next week. Hope you guys are safe and healthy wherever you're at. Until next time, true believers, Excelsior. Yep. Yeah, a lot going on in that email. Thank you very much for the feedback, 084. Appreciate that. That was emailed to us, which you can email us at any time to StargatePioneer at GettyGeek.com, and I will make sure everybody got it. And that happened this time. As soon as I got it, I forwarded it on. One of the things that he brings up, which I thought was interesting, was that Azel with May. And Azel was the big bad last season, and 
I don't think Azel escaped into May. I think what May is undergoing, this is just speculation on my part, that I think where May is going is she actually died. And remember how the Tahiti thing was with Coulson when they brought him back? And he just had no concept of the pain that brought it forward and that sort of thing. I think Simmons' research into that was brought forward into this tube that she's using with Comic-Con technology. And there was some interaction there. And she admitted she didn't know if there was going to be some unknown interaction. And she has lost... A connection to herself, to reality. I think that's what's going on with me. I don't think it has anything to do with Azel. I'm pretty sure we're done with that storyline. Yeah, she seemed very robotic in her reply of, I have to be out in the field. I'm the protector. I have to go protect them. And that was just like her, her one thing. I have to go protect them. I have to go protect them. And then when she saw them return... And she's, is it my imagination or was it when Simmons said something or was it when Colson said something that she stopped? It was either one of those two, but. I think it was when she saw them, like just the group in general. Yeah. Colson came up and he said, stop me when they drove up the ramp with the old car. It was Colson that said something and that was meant okay. to show. So I, I watched it the second time because I was kind of interested in what was going on there. My speculation was they let Coulson do that to try to shock her into stopping. But I don't know because Daisy was, she didn't know what to do at that point and Yo-Yo didn't know what to do. So Coulson is making a lot of the shots here is, is making a lot of the decisions, but anytime Max around, like when they had to put the ramp up, Colson deferred to Mac and Michelle, you talked about it last time that Colson was deferring to Mac and that is true, but he's making some decisions and people are deferring to that. Even Mac a little bit, if it's a minor decision. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. Like when she saw them, heard them, she, it's almost like the switch flipped. And then all of a sudden she was just willing to be sedated and everything was fine. Oh, I hope our may gets to be may again soon yeah i'm hoping some extra time in the tube will will uh help repair her a little bit but there's more going on than just physical damage in my opinion and then again i don't think it's azel i could definitely see people thinking it could be azel 084 is not saying it's azel he's just bringing it up but it is something that could be there well i really appreciate the feedback both in our Discord and via email. You can also give us feedback on our Twitter account. I know Lauren was live tweeting the episode last night. She had a lot of great comments back and forth on that. If she was here, she'd say thank you very much for that. I am here on her behalf saying thank you very much for that. And she'll hopefully be live tweeting again next week, and we'll talk about it in the next episode. So with that, Haley, do you think it's time that we take a time jump? And get on out of this one? I think it is. I want to thank our listeners for hanging in there with us throughout all these seven seasons. We really appreciate that. I want to thank everybody that gave us feedback. That was great. I want to thank all the great conversation that we're having on our Discord server, which you can find at guineageek.com slash Discord. And you guys are great. And you guys are the reason that we keep on doing this. And we do plan. We had some questions on if we're going to continue on with Luke Cage. And I know I've said it in previous episodes, but yes, once the season is done of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we are going to continue on with Luke Cage season two on Netflix. So that's what our plans are for the future. Thank you to everyone that is riding through us through the end of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, it's been a fun journey and it's not the end of the podcast, but it's the end of an era on the podcast. And thank you for being with us. Yes. Thank you for your feedback, interacting with us and listening to us. We know there's a lot of stuff to consume and the fact that you take time out of your day to listen to us means a lot. Especially now when consuming things is, it's not as much time to consume things the way that we used to just a few months ago. And with that, until next time, I'm Director SP. 
I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Michelle. See you guys next time. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2020.